All right, you remember scripture this week, Matthew 5, 9. Matthew. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. Matthew Blessed five, are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. Oh, awesome. All right, and so yesterday's lesson, we discussed how Jesus had friends in Bethany. His friends in Bethany uh, were Mary, Martha, and their brother, Lazarus. And so we just discussed how Mary and Martha, they both loved the Lord, but God used those two women to show us different examples of how we could go about our relationship with him. So when they had the feast for Jesus, Martha was at the feast serving and helping out, serving food and all of that, making sure Jesus was served. But Mar Mary, on the other hand, she had this expensive perfume that she wanted to give as an honor or a tribute to the Lord. And so she took this very expensive perfume. She broke the alabaster jar. She poured it on his feet, washed his feet. And she that was her form of worship and adoration for him. And so everyone looked at what Martha did, what Mary did, and thought it was strange that she would give such expensive perfume away like that. But Mary knew that Jesus was deserving of it, regardless of the price of it. And then we also discussed how when Jesus was in town at one point, Mary and Martha were excited. Martha was working and cooking in the kitchen and all of that. But Mary, on the other hand, was sitting at the feet of Jesus, drinking and soaking in his words and um, everything that he had. And so Martha criticized Mary for not helping her in the kitchen. But Jesus told Martha that Mary had found a good thing because Jesus would not would, would not be with them forever. And so she, Mary was trying to take as much time with him as she possibly could. And so let's go ahead and get into our lesson on today. So uh, these are Jesus's friends in Bethany. And so he would often visit them. So whenever Jesus received word that Lazarus was sick, it troubled him. So Lazarus ended up getting sick. He was the brother of Mary and Martha. And despite everything they tried to do, the doctors, medicine, it's like he was getting worse and worse. He was not improving and he was becoming more and more sick. And they knew that Jesus was the only one who could potentially help him. They were like, we know that Jesus could do something, right? But Jesus was not in town at that time. So they were like, we need to find him. We need to get him so that he could come and do something to heal Lazarus. So Mary told her servants, she said, quickly, go find Jesus wherever he is and tell him that the one who he loves is sick. And so Jesus was actually... Um, near the Jordan River. And so the messenger found him, came to him and told Jesus, Jesus, listen, you got to hurry up. Lazarus is sick. He's almost at the point of death. Mary and Martha need you really bad to come, to come and heal him. Please, could you come? The one who you love is sick. And so Jesus told the messenger, he says, okay. He says, but the purpose of this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. He says, I, the son of God will receive glory from this situation. And so we don't, he, the messenger didn't understand what Jesus was saying. He's like, what are you, Lazarus is dying. You just need to come. I understand everything, but just come and heal him, right? And so the thing is though, Jesus didn't. He didn't come right away like Mary and Martha thought he would, right? Remember how he left with Jairus and went to his house, the nobleman, he said, your son is healed. No, he didn't do any of that with this one. Jesus simply said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. So they couldn't understand. They were like, what is he saying? What is going on? And so the messenger comes back and tells them what Jesus said. And so Mary and Martha are like, well, is he going to come? Well, what's going on? And so then a day passes, Jesus still never showed up. Another day passes and Jesus still never came. And so Mary and Martha are like, did he not get our message? Why didn't he come? And unfortunately, the thing that they didn't want to happen ended up happening. And guess what? Lazarus dies. They didn't want their brothers to die, but unfortunately he does pass away. And Mary and Martha, they're left confused because they're like, why didn't Jesus come? Why didn't he come and help? Like what? They couldn't understand why he allowed their brother to die, right? He could have came right when they sent the messenger, but he didn't. And so they were a little sad and upset about that. And so they kind of pushed it in the back of their mind and they prepared 
to bury their brother. So they prepared his body for burial. So you, back in the Bible days, they would often like put spices and herbs on the Bible, the body to preserve the body. And they would wrap the body in linen cloth and they will put you in a tomb. So they didn't have like today, when we had to go to a funeral, you know, there's a casket and then they lower the casket in the ground, right? Well, in the Bible days, they would have tombs, which was like little tunnels, little caves, I guess you could say, that they would usually put the bodies in. So they prepare for Lazarus' funeral. They go, they put him in the tomb. They roll the stone. And usually you will put this really large, huge stone over the the entrance. And that was it. Like it was sealed. You weren't going in, going out. The person was dead. There was nothing to do. It, they were gone. And so they still were like, it's just strange that Jesus didn't come. And so two days passed and Jesus was still where he was. He did not go to Bethany to see them. So after those two days, Jesus was like, okay, let's finally go to Judea. And the disciples are like, should Judea? They were like, why are we going back over there? He was like, what are we doing? And Jesus says, our friend Lazarus has gone to sleep and I got to go and wake him up. Now the disciples did not know that Lazarus actually was dead. Jesus knew, but well, he said, well, he didn't think he said, he says, I'm going to go wake him up. So he thought Lazarus was simply what? Sleeping. Didn't he say that same thing about Jairus's daughter that she's just sleeping? She's not dead, right? But the disciples, they don't know. They didn't know at the time what happened with Lazarus. So they're just like, okay, if you say so, let's go to Bethany so we can go see Lazarus, your friend who's sleeping and let's go wake him up. And so- Jesus knew that Lazarus was dead, but they didn't know. So they followed Jesus, you know, all the way to Bethany. They went with him. And when they got there, that's when the disciples realized, wait, Lazarus is not sleeping. Lazarus is dead. So now they're even more confused because they're like, what is Jesus thinking? Like, why is he telling us to come here? And Lazarus is dead. Like, he's going to come wake him up. Now, remember, when Jesus did the other miracle with Jairus' daughter, when he woke her up when she was dead, it was only Peter, James, and John that was with him. So a lot of the other disciples aren't aware that Jesus can raise from the dead. Peter, James, and John are, but not the rest of the disciples. So this kind of confused them a bit because they're like, this is strange. This is very, very strange. Okay, so finally they arrived in Bethany. That's when the disciples realized that Lazarus is dead. And so Mary and Martha, this time, they are excited to see Jesus, but it's a little different this time. The last time that Jesus went to Bethany, Martha was getting busy to work. She was working. Mary was ready to spend time with them. This time it's a little different. It's not that they weren't excited to see Jesus this time. They just were a little like, you know, sad and down because they had asked him to come and he didn't come and their brother is gone now because he did not come. And so Martha goes to Jesus and she says, Lord, she says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She says, but you know, even now it's not too late for I know that God will bring my brother back to life again. If only you will ask him to. So Martha has some kind of hope, right? She says, Lord, you know, I, I know my brother's gone, but I still have some kind of hope, some way, somehow, that maybe he can come back. I don't know. It's been a few days now. It's been four days, actually, since he died. So maybe not. And so Jesus told her, he says, Martha, your brother will come back to life again. And Martha said, I know, I know. On the day of the resurrection, when everyone else who's that, who has went to sleep comes back, they will wake up. And Jesus says, no, no, no. He says, I am the one who raises the dead and gives them life again. And anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like anyone else, he shall live again. And he is given eternal life for believing in me and he shall never perish. He says, do you believe this, Martha? And she's like, well, Lord, I know that you're the Messiah. So whatever you say, right? She didn't understand what he was saying. But she was like, okay, if, if that's what you say, that you can raise the dead and bring back to life, cool. That's what you say. So then Jesus is like, well, where is Mary? Because remember, every time Mary, Jesus showed up, Mary was always there ready to worship. But in this case, Mary's not there. And so Jesus is like, well, where is Mary? And so Martha ran in the house to go and get her. And she said, Martha, Mary, Jesus is here. Come and see him. So Mary goes and she's a little different now, right? This is not the same Mary that we saw break the box and worship. The Mary that sat at his feet 
Now this is a different Mary. She's hurt, you know, and she's sad. And so when she sees Jesus, the first thing she says is, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. So she's obviously really sad that Jesus did not show up and come like she request, like they requested him to for her brother. And so she's like, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother maybe would have still been alive today. And then she starts to weep and she cries because they're hurt. They lost their brother. This is, this is hurtful. And the Bible tells us in this moment, this is the shortest scripture in the Bible. And it says, Jesus wept. So in this moment, Jesus, he cries, he cries. And because he felt compassion, he felt the sadness that Mary and Martha were feeling in this moment. And he was moved and he was like, okay, where is he? Where is Lazarus buried at? Where is he? And they said, Lord, come, come and see. So they took him to the tomb where Lazarus was. Then Jesus tells them something that makes them say, what? He says, roll back the tomb. And they were like, roll back the tomb. They were like, well, Jesus, first of all, Lazarus has been dead four days. It probably stinks really bad in there because his body is decomposing. They were like, it's it's probably not a good idea for us to roll back the stone, Jesus. What are why are you telling us to do this? They were like, mm -mm, we shouldn't do that. But Jesus says, no, roll back the stone. He says, didn't I say you would see a wonderful miracle? He says, trust God and believe. And so they listen and they they go and they get the heavy stone and they roll it open and everybody's like, oh, because that's what happens when the body when you die, the body starts to break down right? Your blood is not flowing. Your heart is not beating anymore. Like the body's dead. And so I'm sure you've seen like an animal dead on the side of the road, right? Yeah. So they were like, oh God, what is Jesus going to do? And so Jesus looks to heaven and he says, father, thank you for always hearing me. Right. He said, he says, thank you for always hearing me. You always hear me, of course. But I say this because of the people standing around. He says, Jesus, so Jesus looks at the tomb and he simply says, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out, come forth. And everybody's just staring and standing around like, okay, what is Jesus doing? And Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden they start to hear something moving around and they hear something. And all of a sudden, guess who walks out of the tomb? Dad. Lazarus, who was dead for four days. See, Jairus's daughter was dead for just a couple of hours, right? Or maybe, yeah, something like that. But Lazarus was dead for four whole days. Four days. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. And it's like instantly life comes back to Lazarus. He's breathing again. He's healed. He's whole. He's strong again. His color is back again. He's back fresh, alive. He comes out and he was in the, remember I told you, they wrap you in the linen cloth and he was in the linen cloth and everybody is like, whoa, what just happened? And so with Jairus's daughter, remember it was only Jairus, his wife and Peter, James and John. But in this moment, it's everybody who was around. So this was a couple of few people that were around that were able to witness this in this moment. And so Jesus told them, he says, unwrap him and let him go. And they did that. And so everyone is like, what? So Mary and Martha go and they hug their brother. They're like, brother, you're, you're, and Lazarus, you know, he probably didn't even know what happened. He didn't probably even know he was dead that long. And so everything comes back and he comes back to life and everyone sees this in this moment. And they're like, whoa, what did Jesus just do? He brought Lazarus back to life. That's what he just did. And they were amazed. Everyone instantly is like, wow. And they can't believe what they just witnessed. A dead man who had been dead for four days, simply coming back to life by Jesus saying, Lazarus, come forth. So that's the power. That's why Jesus told her, he says, I hold the power of the resurrection, of the power of life, because I can command life to come back. And, I, and he did. He showed them in this moment. He commanded Lazarus, who was dead. We know he was dead. He commanded him to come back to life. And God still holds that power today. Not only can he spiritually make things alive, but he can physically bring back life to something that was dead. That's the power that he holds. That's the God that he is. He can command life, right? And he also holds the power of death as well. And so when he calls Lazarus to come forth, Lazarus comes back alive. 
instantly, right away, healed completely. And so everyone sees this and everyone is like, who is this man? What is, how does he, how can he do this? And everyone is shocked and amazed. So some of the Jewish leaders were there as well. And they saw and they witnessed what happened. They believed in him, but they, but some of them went and told some of the Pharisees what happened. And this is going to kind of be the start of a lot of issues that will occur because the religious leaders will be upset. Now they're seeing and they know the power that Jesus holds, but it's their pride that will not let them admit that he is indeed the son of God, the Messiah, the one sent from heaven to come on earth. So Jesus commands Lazarus to come back to life. And so everyone was sad and they thought it was over. The situation was done, but little did they know Jesus held the power of life. And he told the messenger though, then he say this dead, this, this is not unto death, but until the glory of God. And did God get the glory out of this? Yes. Yes, God did. We see how Lazarus is alive. And now and every all anyone can do now is look at Jesus and say, you are God and believe in him. Amen. Amen. So Lazarus is back alive. He's doing well. He's, he's back. Mary and Martha are happy again. Their brother is alive. And we see once again how Jesus proves and shows that he is not just a man. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher, but that he is God's son, the son of God. Okay. All right. So that's our Bible lesson on today on Lazarus coming back to life. Lazarus coming back to life. Jesus, after four days, Jesus calls him and he comes forth. Okay. All right, guys. That's it for Bible. I'll see you guys a little later for Zoom. Okay. Bye-bye.